Have you ever felt like you've been on an emotional roller coaster, either by your emotions or someone else's emotions, or feeling our feelings are fickle and we cannot live by our feelings? If we follow our feelings, our life will be chaos. But understand this, your destiny can be chaos too if you follow your feelings. Also, we're going to share about a wisdom moment from the book of Proverbs on the importance of staying away from stuff and money obtained in wrong ways while remembering the importance of seeking God, not just personally, but also even in our business dealings. Take a look. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. Today we're gonna to be talking very specifically about you know, things that are happening to you in regards to your feelings. Feelings are so important, they're fickled. And it's important to recognize them because so often so many people say they're being spirit led or yeah. they're, you know, they're, you know, God's speaking to them and what it is is they're just uncomfortable. You know, and, and our feelings, you have to pay attention to our feelings. They're very fickle. And Chuck Pierce of Zion Ministries in Corinth, Texas, he prophesied, and we've got the whole prophecy available to you, but this is one part of it to help you understand that, you know, God's talking specifically through him about saying a, a war is coming. And it could be any kind of war, but I know this, definitely a war is being waged against your feelings, what you're feeling, what you want, what you think, what you feel, because it's a battle for men's souls. Let's go listen to Chuck Pierce about this prophetic word about a war. Now I'm calling you into a place you've not been before. And I say to you, this is a time of importation for war. I say I'm imparting war into my people. And one generation will teach another generation to war. So I say to you, you must shift now to understand and to know your place for days ahead. This is so important. And understand, you know, God's a spirit and those that worship him must worship him, him in spirit of truth. He's looking for spiritual worshipers, worshipers who worship him. You know, Jesus came in the form of man, but yet he, and he humbled himself and walked as we walked. And it says very specifically, although he was a son, he learned, right? He learned, and with loud cries and petitions, he cried out to the one who could save him from death, which means his emotions were under assault. His, his, his every, I'm just the way we are. Fully God, fully man. Yeah, and the fact that he didn't give in to those things, and it was just called sin. And so understand this war, I believe, is coming. Anything could happen at any time. But the question is, what do you feel about those things? Mm. You know, what, are, what are your response to, you those respond to those feelings? And how do you respond to those feelings? It makes me think of Joyce Myers. You know, Joyce Myers was talking about how fickle feelings are. As a matter of fact, let's listen to Joyce Myers. Now, emotions are so fickle. Did you ever say to somebody, you are so fickle? And when you say that to them, what you're actually saying is, I cannot depend on you. You are one way one day and another way the next day. And we have to understand that emotions are fickle. They change without any notice at all. You can go to bed feeling like you want to do something the next morning and wake up the next morning and you don't want to do it at all. You don't feel like doing it at all. I had that happen to me yesterday. I walk every day, several miles, and I actually really love it. I really miss it when I can't do it. And when I do my conferences, I can't do it. And uh, I came here a day early to do something at Life Church, and so this time I'm here for three days, so I'm really wanting to get home and walk again. Well, normally I won't walk on Saturdays because when I get home from my conferences, because I'm just really tired. And so Thursday night, I said, when I get home on Saturday, Dave, I think instead of eating out, I'm gonna go home and walk first, and then we can pick up something and eat at home. And he said, okay. Well, when I got up Friday morning, I was still good for that. I mean, that's, you know, no, Thursday night, I was still okay. Then Friday morning, I got up this morning, and I was kind of tired, and I thought, oh, I don't know if I, don't know if I feel like walking on Saturday. And then later on in the day, I started to feel a little bit better. And I said, yeah, you know, I am going to go home and I'm going to walk on Saturday. And so I finally just said, I think we just better wait till Saturday and see what happens there. <laughs> now, see, I, I can do that with something like that because that's not a life altering decision. But there are some things that you cannot afford to do that with. 
There are some things that you got to set your mind and keep it set, and no matter how you feel or don't feel, you got to go ahead and do that thing. There's some things you got to set your mind and you got to do them no matter what you feel, and that's the war. The war mm. is after your emotions, after your feeling. Understand this, that you're a spirit that has a body that possesses a soul. I mean, the more, moment you're born again, your spirit man's born again. Yeah. Your flesh is not born again. It's, 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 it's a, there's a day coming when you're going to get a new body. It's not. But your soul, talks about it in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, has to be renewed. And your soul is what you think, what you want, and what you feel. And this war, it's been going on for, since the beginning of time, but understand, it's going to increase. It's increasing. It's the battle over what you want, the battle over what you feel. You know, what you want, think, and feel. And so you have all this media and all these people that are saying all these things, and you have to make up your mind, am I going to follow God hmm. or am I going to follow my feelings? Because your feelings are fickled and they will fool you. As a matter of fact, very specifically, when, when you're looking at being a person of faith, faith is about surety and certainty. You know, Hebrews 11, 1, now faith is being Sure. sure of what you hope for and certain, certain of what you don't see. see. There's one thing I'm sure about is your feelings are never sure. Mm -hmm. They betray you, right? They're always like, and, and you can't go by. So many people, how, John, how many people do we see that you're trying to share with them wisdom, right? And they're on this feeling roller coaster and they're all worn out. They're, some of them are probably physically ill in their body, yeah. and, but they won't, they keep following their feelings yeah. and their feelings are betraying them. And when you tell them the truth, they think they're obligated to follow their feelings when the feeling is about our soul, which is supposed to be, it can, it can change, right? That's right. And then what happens is that they're just, you're up one second, down the other. Yeah. And people that are not, don't live by principle or don't live by truth, right. you just never know where they're going to land on any, you know, any, any day because it's, it's all led by their feelings or worse, yeah. they're being led by someone else's feelings. Right. If I'm not going to follow my feelings, well, you know, I yeah. am not going <laughs> to follow, follow your yours. feelings. <laughs> I made, up, I, made up a decision, I made a decision a long time ago was, if you're going to get on the emotional roller coaster, mm. I'm going to stay right here and watch yeah. you, you I'm scream and holler it. and all that. Yeah. When you come off, I'll talk to you again. Yeah. But sometimes if you don't know that, you're actually following, some, somebody says they're being spirit-led. It's like, your life is chaos. That's right. That's, that's the soulish leading, you know. Not, uh, but think about this. Whichever dog you feed wins the fight. Mm. You know, this guy has two dogs. And he would go and he would uh, f have these dogs, he'd have these dogs fight, right? Mm -hmm. And so with that, you know, every time he would pick the dog that would win the fight. And it would switch back and forth. And he would win money or something while he's bitten on dogs. I mean, I don't do that. John probably does, but I don't do that. No, so, I don't do that. <laughs> I know there was a football player. Anyway, so, but in that, that somebody finally asked him, says, how do you know every single time which dog wins? And he says, it's the dog I feed. And that's what it is with your soul. You know, if, if with, your, with your flesh, with your soul, or with your spirit, man. You know, when, you're, when you're, your feelings are going all which way, if you feed those feelings, your soul will line up with those feelings. Mm -hmm. It'll agree with it. Mm -hmm. But if you follow the light, if you follow hope, if you like, even though you're not feeling like turning on VFN TV today, even though you're not feeling like listening to, you know, to an to a, a anointed message or anointed song or hanging out with a Christian friend, it doesn't matter what you're feeling. This is so important. It does not matter what you're feeling. This is, I'll tell you, your soul betray. Understand this. When you take your unfeeling self, when you don't want to do that, and you just say, I'm going to listen to this anointed song. I want to listen to this anointed teaching, this message. I'm going to watch VFN TV and be encouraged. What happens is your soul shows up and goes, yeah, I was always for this. Yeah. <laughs> Because your soul is led by your spirit or your flesh. You have to choose who's going to be the leader right there and whichever one you're feeding. So when you start feeding your spirit and you're starting to take these anointed songs in and you're hanging out with friends who love God and they're not perfect, but you know, they, they challenge you That's in right. the area and you're going to church and fellowshipping with, with folks. And I mean, all of a sudden your soul just loves it. But you know what? If you actually turn away of your flesh and you feed your flesh, your soul will go that way of your flesh. And all of a sudden you're just vegging out and you're letting whatever they want to put on television come into your eyes or on your phones or wherever you're listening to media or hanging out. Your soul will suffer for those it's conversations. Amazing. And the more lethargic you'll become because you're yes. just not engaged in God or the things of God. That's it. So it's real simple. Which one you're feeding, not feeling, wins the fight. Listen, we get back from this break. We're going to hear a little bit more from Joyce because your feelings will betray you. Knowing that alone, it's like, I am not going to follow them again. Join us out at the break. We'll be right back. 
Don't miss your chance to get this free book, I Will Fight 10 Strategies for Your Success, where I share a prophetic encounter God gave me about a coming wealth transfer. And this whole genesis of this book and these strategies is to position you for a coming wealth transfer. It's 10 strategies for success. Dealing with your belief, your actions, commitments, giving you plans, giving you strategies. I mean, so many things I can't even talk about. But it's yours for free. Go to vfnkb.com and get your free copy now. Hi, welcome to Chick-fil-A. How may I serve you? After church, how about a Chick-fil-A grilled sandwich and an order of fries? If it's Sunday, it's not happening. The closed on Sunday sign follows the policy of Chick-fil-A's founder, Truett Cathy, to give employees more time with their family. A day most food business experts agree is one of the best for business. And for the same reason, closed on Sunday is on all 700 Hobby Lobby stores. David Green, founder of Hobby Lobby, in his new book, Giving It All Away and Getting It Back Again, referring to Genesis 2-2, writes, the idea of a day of rest is centuries old. There's a rhythm built into the created order. Work no more than six days, then take one off. This rhythm should not be ignored. The Bible, its influence in every aspect of life and work. Brought to you by Museum of the Bible. Welcome back to VFN TV with your host, Greg Lancaster. Welcome, welcome back. This is so important, isn't it? Yeah. You know, because I, I just really feel God laid this on my heart. And it could be because, you know, I'm feeling it. Yeah. Sometimes I feel it, you know, what people are going through. But obviously we're always feeling yes. it. But I just feel like this. I feel like this. I know this, <laughs> that if you don't get off the feeling roller coaster, your destiny is going to be changed. And you're going to end up at the end of a road that your feelings led you yeah. on. It, it betrayed your destiny. It betrayed your faith in the integrity. As a matter of fact, I want you to listen to Joyce Myers she ta as she talks specifically about the importance of not following your feelings and understanding that because it affects your integrity. Take a look. Feelings disappear when you would like to have their support. <laughs> <laughs> and they appear at times when you really wish they wouldn't. We would love to feel like exercising, like cleaning out the garage. We would love to feel like going to work or paying the bills. But those feelings refuse to show up and support us. They will, they will, they will lead you down the road, off a cliff, and they'll, they'll, they'll go down and they'll go, look at you, right? Look what you did. Look what you did. It's like they'll, mis they'll just mislead you. And you think about it, when you follow your feelings, they'll lead you away on a trail away from integrity. If you look at people that struggle with integrity, and we all you know, have issues and we're, we're working, we're saying, but, there, but there's some people's like, do you, they're, they're interviewing people today, John, and they ask him, what is integrity? And they don't they even don't know. know. They don't, they don't know. even know what it is. And so if you're going to be a person of integrity, you have to take your feelings and put them on a shelf somewhere and have them submit to, you know, what God's leadership, and you'll find out your soul, what you think, what you want, and you feel will line up. Yeah. It will line up. Isn't it yeah. amazing that you can take a business professional mm -hmm. or a sports athlete and they understand the power of discipline and the matter of you yeah. can't go with feelings. Right. But you take that same individual and take them out of that one element of their life, and let's say just put it in a relational, but they're different. They're yeah. led by their feelings. Right. And so it's being about a principled person or being led by your character and led by truth consistently over a period of time and resisting the temptation to go by whatever you feel like because you don't accomplish much in that yeah, way. And the, and the thing about it is if you're being led by your feelings, you're being led by your soul. And he says, those that are led by the Spirit of God, mm. that your spirit follows God's spirit, and he calls you a son or a daughter of God. And so to follow your feelings is to follow your soul, what you think, what you want, and what you feel. Your soul needs to submit to your spirit, submit to the Word of God, and it will line up. It'll act like it always wanted to sing that song eventually, but you have to go with that. I think about this. Watchman Nee says this. Take a look mm. at this. Watchman Nee says this. He, can you see this? Put up, uh, here you go. Watchman Nee says, he who lives by emotion will live without principles. And how many people today, even in this whole political arena that's going on, it's all about soul. It's all about feelings. And it's all, it's not about facts. No. It's not about <laughs> principles. It's not about truth. It's about how do you feel about that? But if you interview the folks, I mean, they're actually interviewing people about a Supreme Court pick that hasn't been made yet. And they're putting a mic in their face, John. They're asking them a question. Well, how do you feel about it? I don't like that pick. It's a bad pick. And they all these terrible things. And finally, he and goes. And they haven't been picked yet. They haven't been picked yet. 
And it's, that's what happens when you're just, it makes a, your feelings make a fool out of well, you. Some right? people validate their feelings, they give voice to their feelings, they listen to other people. And there, there's a, a part in a period in time where you can identify what the feelings are, right. but then you have to determine are you going to be led by them? You know what I mean? Right. I may feel this way, I may not feel like not wanting to go to work. Mm -hmm. It's probably not a good idea if I don't show up. I need to probably show up to my job, you know? And the thing, if, you're gonna have, if we're going to have integrity, we've got to recognize feelings, recognize our soul. It is, you know, what do you tell a young child? It's like, I want to stay up all night long. It's like you're three years old, you're going to go to bed, right? Because yeah. they're, they're, you know, that's what they're wanting. But you know as a parent it's not the right thing. that, you know, Isaiah is going to have to go to bed. He's going to have to go to bed. He's going to have to get his bath, that's you know, it. clean behind his ear, <laughs> go to bed. Do the right? whole thing, you know. No, I just, we're joking, but seriously, because you, you know that's what's right for them. They don't know that yet. But when you grow up and you're a 40 years old man, you know, you're a 40 year old woman, 25 year old man. You should know that you don't follow your soul. You don't stay up all night. But how many people today are staying up all night, playing mm -hmm. with their digital stuff, you know, texting and communicating and messaging all around the world? And it's like, you got to go to sleep and get a job. You Hello. Know? Right? <laughs> At least you're up on time, right? And so following your feelings based on what we know, what a Watchman Nee's talking about, is you're leaving integrity. So if you're going to have integrity, you need to get somebody's, a relationship with somebody to be accountable and just like, you know, because we, we go there. Sometimes we just get emotional and we're under attack all the time in our emotions. If you just watch secular. People are human. If you just watch secular uh, news, you're like, you just emotional. And, and it's so important to understand this. We're not going to go much there in this, but you got to be able to have compassion for people. And you won't if you're moving off of feelings. You're going to look at what they said that offended you. It's offending your feelings. But God cares about that person who's talking to you. Only if you understand this will you be able to care yeah. about and have compassion for them. We'll be right back. This is Just a Thought with Ravi Zacharias. We in America had better wake up. We think we're the cat's whiskers out here. We've got it all. We've got power. We've got all this sense of accomplishment. And it was Abraham Lincoln who alerted us in the proclamation of humiliation. And if we didn't realize that it came from the goodness of God, it could all vanish. History is replete with examples of power-based nations that grow in self-aggrandizement can be brought very low indeed. And gratitude is a vital part of your prayer life. Each day you thank God in spite of all of the things. It remind all of us is to be aware that as God has given you all of this, it is not an entitlement. It is a gift and a gracious thing, and we come to him and say thank you. Helping the thinker believe and the believer think. For more information, go to rzim.org. Why you see that changing? Because it's time. You know the difference between you and these people? They're cowards. The wisdom moment for today, and of course, as we said earlier, wisdom is knowledge properly applied. I mean, God is wisdom. But I'm reading the proverb from Proverbs chapter 1, verses 10 through 19. It reads, My son, if sinful men entice you, do not give in to them. If they say, come along with us and let us lie in wait for innocent blood, Let's ambush some harmless soul. Let's swallow them alive like the grave and whole. Like those who go down to the pit, we will get all sorts of valuable things and fill our house with plunder. Cast lots with us and we'll all share in this loot. My son, do not go along with them. Do not set foot on their paths. For their feet rush into evil. They are swift to shed blood. And how useless to spread a net where every bird can see it. These men lie in wait for their own blood. They ambush only themselves. Such are the paths of all who go after ill-gotten gain. It takes away the life of those who get it. Mm. 
And it's like today, when you, you hear us talk about, it's just business. Mm. This is the very first proverb in the book of Proverbs talking about ill-gotten gain. I mean, you can take the first part of what I was reading slowly to you and say, you know what? That sounds like somebody trying to get me in this particular business deal. Hmm. But you got to ask the right questions. Is it legal? Are we bilking people here? Are we taking advantage of them? Are we asking for exorbitant prices that's unfair? When we finish this business transaction, will they be worse off than they were in the beginning? Or will they be blessed because of the encounter that took place? Well, these guys would say, it doesn't matter. Mm. We're going to do these folks in. Don't you understand? We don't even care if, the, if their blood is let over this. We don't even care. Uh, what, how, we'll, just, we'll hide out and we'll wait for them to come and we'll rob them. Mm. I mean, think about all the people today in the mindset. This is Ill, I mean, ill-gotten game. Money gotten in a way that was ill. It was wrong in the way that it was gotten. Uh, you may be working with a company or a business. Or you may have a business. But it's dawned on you at some point that this is not right. But maybe you're doing like so many people are doing today. But I got to have a job. I mean, I got to have an income. Mm. But understand, God is not pleased and will not bless and will not accept you oppressing people your entire life just so you can have milk on your cereal. He'd rather you have a crumb of bread Mm. and be struggling for your existence than to make a hundred people struggle for their existence and have a crumb of bread because you took their money through ill-gotten ways. Mm. Ill-gotten gain. So many people are wanting to make money on money and all these other kind of things going on. And it's like the church has totally slipped the whole concept of going like, we got to care about folks. We got to care about folks. We shouldn't be thinking like how we can have if, we're, if our poorest people are richer than 80% of the world, that means the majority of America is richer probably than 5 or 3% of the world. And it's like, we've got to be careful. How, how are we managing that which God has given to us? And how you do business matters. It matters how you do business. It matters if you're, you're not being upfront and you got such small print that, that you know that that lady can't read that small print and you just kind of brush over that fact. You should just just lay it out there. Trust God. Lay everything out there. Let them know what's going on and let them make a decision. But don't be hiding things and putting things in contracts that people can't find, you know, and 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 don't make money off other people's losses. It's not okay. It's not okay if you see people that are I mean, we think about it. You know what we've done in America in a lot of states now, maybe every state that we decided to, to pay for our education with monies that come from gambling, mm. from lotteries. So you have these folks who are struggling, trying to make a living, and they just have a, you know, a couple of dollars, and I want to get some hope, and they start paying money into the education for your kid in hopes that they might get some winning pot. Mm-hmm. You know, and of course, just one or two win. But everybody, you know, makes money off that ill-gotten gain. And that person, the majority of those folks needed that money. They had this this hope. And it's like, we're making money. We're educating our kids on ill-gotten gain. I mean, think about it. Why don't we just pay for what we want, what, we, what we're using? Why do we have to manipulate people to the point where we stir their, their false hopes up and say, we'll take them, we'll spread this net out here called right. the, the, the state lottery, and they'll all play it. And, you know, one out of one million people will get something out of it and everybody else will take their money and we'll educate our kids with it. I mean, that's ill. You know, it's, it's like, why mm-hmm. don't we just pay for our kids' education? Why don't we just tax the appropriate amount of money? Why do we have to, 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 to bilk people? You know, you know what I'm saying? Why do we have to right, bilk people? Right. Now, if we didn't tie right. that into education... And there was, there was a lottery going on. Well, that's just people playing a lottery or whatever. But we're actually educating our kids based off somebody's loss. Loss. It's a big difference. And complaining about how things are done. Mm-hmm. I mean, how many business deals? How many people take advantage of people? 
And I talk about it quite often called the deal. And people just brag about the deal they got. And it's like, but how do that? Can I talk to the other person in this deal? How do they right. feel? Right. Well, you know, they just should have, they just should have asked the right questions. They didn't ask the right questions. Mm. Well, you should have volunteered all that. But when you, t- when you openly talk about these things, you're trusting God. When you hide them, you're trusting your own ways. And this way it would be ill gotten increase. Mm-hmm. You know, nobody's perfect. We're not seeing things work out well. But if you intentionally, intentionally are laying in wait to take that which belongs to another, that's ill-gotten gain. And what he says about that, very specifically, he says, and he's telling us, he's, the wisdom says, my son, don't go along with them. Don't even set your foot on the paths. For their feet rush into evil. They're swift to shed blood. It's amazing how many people don't care that the widow woman's bleeding. Mm -hmm. They don't care that she can't pay her light bill because of what happened. Mm -hmm. Predatorial lending taking place. Ma'am, just just put a mortgage on your house. Put a mortgage on it just so you can get a 2% bonus on your check while she's wrapped with a 20-year mortgage that she couldn't afford. And the house that she's going to lose. And the house that she's going to lose. And then here comes Mr. Uh, you know, reverse mortgage, dude. And all of a sudden, he's going to wrap her up for the rest of her life and own mm. her house the moment she goes on to be with the Lord. Mm. Then you have the little small clause in it that says, and some of those, that if she doesn't pay her taxes, you take it anyway, even when she's alive. And it's like, what have we come to? Mm-hmm. What have we come to? Listen, God is the provider. All things come from God. We're not perfect. You're not going to have what everybody else has. You're going to have what God's given you. It could be more, it could be less, but you can be satisfied what God has given you. If you, if you honor God, if you honor God with what he's given you with the first fruits, if you just say, Lord, I acknowledge you're the one that gave me this increase. You're the one that blessed the work of my hands. We quite often call that the tithe, but it's the first, first fruits of it and give it to God and say, God, here, Thank you for what you've given me. God said, I'll pour you out a blessing that you can't contain. You don't have to be scamming everybody and, and doing people and have this ill-gotten gain. Begin to follow God. Today's wisdom moment is from Proverbs chapter 1, verse 10 through 19. My son, if sinful men entice you, do not give in to them. If they say, come along with us, let us lie in wait for innocent blood. Let's ambush some harmless soul. Let's swallow them alive like the grave and whole, like those who go down to the pit. We will get all sorts of valuable things and fill our houses with plunder, Mm. cast lots with us, and we'll all share in the money Mm. and the stuff and the things. My son, do not go along with them. Do not set your foot on their path, for their feet rush into evil. They are swift to shed blood. How useless to spread a net where every bird can see it. These men lie in wait for their own blood. They ambush only themselves. Such are the paths of all to go after ill-gotten gain. It takes away the life of those who get it. I'm your host, Greg Lancaster, and we're so glad that you've joined us. Don't forget you can join us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download our app and sign up for our newsletter, The Torch, at vfnkb.com. I've enjoyed our time together. God bless. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. I'm your host, Greg Lancaster, and we're so glad that you've joined us. Don't forget you can join us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download our app and sign up for our newsletter, The Torch, at vfnkb.com. I've enjoyed our time together. God bless.